Well, there goes the bell to usher in a new program for the year 2017. This is the trading bell. We are coming to you from the Nairobi Securities Exchange. My name is O'Brien Kimani, and this week we focus on how the market has performed. And of course, we look at the sentiments that are likely to shape the market in the year 2017. I'll be joined later on by Edwin Chui. He's a research analyst at Dyer and Blair. But for now, we join Chief Executive Officer of INM Bank. This is Kihara Maina. And I'll be wanting to find out where is the bank going in the year 2017. Thank you very much, Kihara, for joining us. Thank you very much Good. for having me. Please, take position. Well, I mean, as a bank, you've been around for almost 50 years now, since 1974. You have been in the banking industry for close to 25 years. That's almost a quarter of a century. It's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the banking industry, back then and now what conclusions do you make well we have certainly come a long way i think if you consider the way the markets have evolved you've uh, you recall that uh, back in the day you had controlled markets um, we've sort of gone back somewhat to 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 that space in some respects but there was a lot more direction then in terms of what you could and couldn't do and um, uh, the freeing up of the markets then led to a lot more innovation, a lot more growth, and uh, I think has played a significant role in making sure that the country sees the level of development that we have seen so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's some, some, you know, with the coming into effect of, um, you know, legislations to, to control the cost of credit, um, it's somehow like we're going back to, to the past. Um, do you think this is good for for a market like ours? I think we have to look to the reasons why we saw that reversal. And I think to appreciate that uh, there are important lessons that banks have taken from this, uh, from this action. Um, and to also understand that uh, there are certain actions that need to be taken to really make sure that uh, this is a beneficial move for everyone. Uh, well, I would say that um, we need to appreciate that uh, what translates into the cost of banking isn't just simply, uh, you know, the prices that uh, banks are charging and the margins that, uh, that accompany that. It's also the inputs that go into that. And a lot of them are a reflection of what the uh, costs of doing business are as a bank. So we have to address all of these things holistically and rather than just simply look at, well, uh, let's, let's take it out and uh, address this using a somewhat blunt instrument by just capping rates. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to look at it and say, how do we actually make market forces work very effectively? Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that um, we are translating the competitive forces into benefits for all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, you know, the act came into force uh, sometimes in October. So we are yet to get the official figures uh, on how it has impacted the market from the Central Bank of Kenya. But for you as a bank and being an insider, uh, how has this impacted your business? So as you said, it's actually still relatively early in terms of the uh, teasing out the impacts. And I think uh, despite the uh, start in late, late September, what we have seen, obviously, is an adjustment period. You know, a lot of things had been sort of held back as people waited to see exactly what would happen. Uh, the implementation process hasn't been exactly smooth. There was quite a lot of uncertainty around exactly how to go about uh, effecting this. And um, throughout all this, banks were trying to do the right thing and make sure that they uh, comply with the law and make sure that they also don't hurt customers. Mm -hmm. Now, still early days to, to tell, but um, already you can see adjustments that are being made in terms of uh, whether you are destroying uh, any value for your shareholders by taking actions without really saying how do we adjust our business models. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of thinking that's going into the recalibration of business models, mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, across the, the banking industry. Mm -hmm. as, as a bank, how have you managed to deal with these uh, new regime? Well, the good thing is that uh, we had already started from a point where we had a, a very efficient uh, operation. 
So we were able to say, well, okay, how do we um, adjust to this without impacting our customers adversely? I'm pleased to say, obviously, we affected it for all our customers, but what we have been able to really do is have conversations with our clients so that they can understand um, exactly what uh, this means in terms of impact to us and also how we can work together to really get a, an outcome that is favorable to them. Um, at the root of it is really making sure you have good relationships with your customers and then even as you adjust and tighten your, 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 your belts uh, to adjust to this, how do you do this and make sure you have good outcomes for your shareholders, for your customers, for your staff. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're focusing on. And um, in terms of credit advances, um, have you settled, have you gone up, have you dropped? It's uh, been a relatively uh, difficult year, I'd say, for, um, for the banking sector in terms of credit. So you will notice that actually we've had very, uh, very low um, you know, growth in the private sector credit. And that is symptomatic of a wider uh, challenge, I guess, in, 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 the, in the markets. So we haven't been immune to that. We've uh, seen relatively uh, muted growth in terms of our, our asset book. And we haven't seen any real change in that in uh, very recent times. We still have uh, the same discussions we're having with our clients about how we can help them with, with growth. We haven't been as adversely impacted in terms of certain demographics because we were not really active in those demographics. But uh, in the corporate space where we are predominantly uh, present, we have continued to see the same kind of uh, growth that you'd expect given the conditions that we have. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about flat growth, what kind of growth are you talking about? Well, uh, we've been seeing uh, less than 10% overall. I mean, if you talk about credit expansion, you've only been talking about 4% um, so far this year for the country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you will still see as you look at the balance sheets of, of banks, year on year you're getting closer to 10% uh, growth, mm -hmm. but maybe not as, as much as uh, you would have liked to see. Uh, but as I said, it is symptomatic of, of, of uh, the performance of the economy generally. Mm -hmm. so, so, so when you're having a situation whereby credit is plateauing, uh, how is this then likely to impact on your profit, bearing in mind that a significant portion of your profit comes from income interest? Well, this is where now innovation has to come to, to the fore because um, I think the focus has to be on what other things do you do as a financial services um, provider mm -hmm. because um, clearly with a shock like you, you saw with the interest rate capping, it shows that you're vulnerable to um, interest rate um, income being impacted in, in this manner. So diversification of your income streams is important and that's what we've been trying to do over the uh, past few years mm -hmm. we have uh, ventured into uh, bank assurance which is doing well we are offering advisory services we recently uh, acquired uh, Babbage capital so it's not uh, operating as an Babbage capital mm -hmm. that is going to strengthen our linkages in in the corporate sector um, make sure that we can also uh, provide under one roof the range of services that our clients require mm -hmm. um, and um, really focusing on our service-led income mm -hmm. really to just say we appreciate that what clients are looking for is mm -hmm. quality service mm -hmm. and if we strengthen that then we would expect that our fee income would, uh, would also help uh, you know balance out that that mix of income. Mm -hmm. uh, be, being a tire to you know, lender, the last six years or so, I mean, you have been on a spending spree, you know, acquiring stakes in, in different uh, entities from Babbage Capital to Gyro Bank. Uh, how has this augured for, for, for you as a bank? Well, I think it is uh, evident that um, we are keen to really make sure that we can build a, a, a financial services uh, business that spans the range of services that clients are looking for. And um, it's not, it's not um, uh, you know, advised by just uh, wanting to get bigger. It's actually about completing 
a, a set or suite of, of services mm -hmm. that we feel are complementary and that can be brought to bear for our customers. Mm -hmm. Now, um, obviously, this is also accompanied by, as a group, looking at our geographical presence. So we appreciate that our customers want to do business increasingly in, in geographies outside Kenya. And we are saying, well, we want to be able to serve them across all those different geographies. Mm -hmm. So it's both from a product suite perspective, as well as from a geographical perspective that we are looking at our inorganic, um, inorganic uh, uh, growth. Mm -hmm. And you, you, um, as, as we wind up, because we have to come to an end, you operate in Mauritius, Kenya, uh, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. And I know uh, that um, business has been very tough, especially in Rwanda. Uh, when do you expect to break even in these markets? So to be clear, we are not in Uganda yet. It is, it is certainly a picture we want to complete. Mm -hmm. um, but in each of these businesses, we are actually profitable, right? And um, we have been in uh, some of these markets for actually quite, quite, a, quite a while. Um, but the, even the recent ones are already uh, very well run and making a lot of um, good returns for, for us. So we think that it is something that we will expect uh, to continue growing. We have uh, continued indeed to invest in them, additional capital in, in some of the businesses as we you know, look to finance the growth that they are, uh, that they are considering. Mm -hmm. And finally, as we come to the end, I want to find out from you, we have seen your uh, operating uh, uh, expenses you know, grow to the current uh, levels of 7.4% from 5.1% um, three years back. Uh, is this worrying you? No, I think um, we appreciate that as we grow, we are going to see growth in our operating expenses. I think the, uh, what would worry me is if our income is not growing commensurately, because we expect that if we are running efficiently, then we should see that uh, all our shillings are actually, that, are, that we are spending on, on uh, cost, are actually giving us the returns that we, we expect. Mm -hmm. So as long as it is clear that we are not, we are not uh, being wasteful, then that is fine. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For joining us here. Okay. Kihara Maina is the Chief Executive Officer of INM Bank. Joining, here, joining us here on the Trading Bell to help us understand the banking market dynamics. This is the Trading Bell. Stay right here. There you are, the figures there with the market moving about 20 points up to this point. Edwin Chui is a senior research analyst at Diane Blair joining us here so that he can help us understand these figures and of course get to understand where is the market going in 2017. Thank you very, very much indeed, Chui, for joining us here. 2017, a very critical year for the country. We are going to the elections. Uh, Donald Trump is going to be sworn in in a couple of days from now. What do you see in the pipeline? Well, we actually have a lot of uh, uncertainty in the market right now. Uh, there's the issue of uh, the election. Uh, uh, we do not really know what's uh, likely to happen, mm -hmm. although uh, I believe everything is going to be okay. And then we have uh, the Trump presidency coming on, and he's uh, promising to pursue very uh, pro-growth policies in mm -hmm. the U.S., which will most likely make uh, the dollar much stronger than it is, which could affect the shilling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have uh, the decision by OPEC uh, to cut uh, supply, which means the price of oil may go back up. Mm -hmm. And that again may also have extra pressure on the shilling. So we do have a lot of moving parts, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Brexit uh, starting formally in March. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we have a, a very uh, resilient economy as mm -hmm. we have seen in the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should expect uh, things to either uh, stay the same or improve. 
Um, I mean, I mean, you have mentioned a couple of or a cocktail of um, uh -huh. external vis-a-vis -vis internal factors. Yeah. When you scan the horizon, yes. Between external factors and internal factors, which one do you think are likely to influence the market even more? I think external factors are likely to influence the market even more, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because our market is dominated by foreign investors. Uh, so uh, if you look at uh, the performance last year, 71% uh, of the net buying was done by foreign investors. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and these are people who have in, in the past maybe considered lower yields uh, in the U.S. as a reason why to come here, mm -hmm. or a weaker dollar in the U.S. as a reason why to come here. But now they are most likely going to face a scenario where the dollar is much stronger, mm -hmm. uh, where it maybe makes sense to put the investments towards uh, dollar-denominated uh, assets. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they are also maybe going to be looking at a situation where uh, they cannot be sure what's going to happen in our uh, election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. And the market is still in a, in, in, in a bear mode. Yes. Do you see this trend persisting? Uh, I not necessarily. I think there are things that we can do uh, locally here to make the market come back up. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I think there are steps that uh, the government could, uh, for instance, take yes. uh, to make sure that the market comes back up. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because we do have uh, you know, pockets of uh, institutional investors in here who are capable of driving the market back up. Uh, who have maybe shied away from our market even when foreign investors are, are actually coming. Mm -hmm. It's one of the sort of ironical aspects of our market where external people have more confidence in what you're doing than you yourselves. So uh, we don't have to be in a barren. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are steps the government could take. There could be more uh, privatization. Uh, there could be more uh, incentives uh, thrown towards uh, local market players to make sure they come into the market. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you talk about uh, privatization, I mean, we have been talking about private, uh, 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 the selling of, um, of uh, public owned sugar companies like yes. um, yes. Uh, Sony yes. Sugar, Chevrolet, yes. and this. Yes. Uh, are you confident? So do you see this happening this year in order to rev up the market? It's unlikely that it will happen this year because of the political implications. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's something that is definitely going to happen at some point, mm -hmm. uh, especially because uh, you know, the evidence speaks for itself. When you look at all the companies that are underperforming, when you look at all the entities that are underperforming, there is an almost connection to public ownership, uh, government ownership, I mm -hmm. mean. Uh, and it seems we sort of have to get to a point where we privatize maybe not everything, but a bit of them mm -hmm. uh, to be able to kind of drive the change that is needed. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that uh, we know, and it's something that we are going to get into uh, soon as possible and, and I want to also to find out from you yes. um, what would you advise the uh, 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 investors out there is it is this the time to buy should this be the time to sell it's very much the time to buy uh, and you know when you think of it um, when you go into the stock market you're often going uh, with a long-term perspective mm -hmm. so let's say one to three year perspective uh, and there are so many things that are so discounted right now mm -hmm. that two to three years right now, you're definitely going to be in the money, even if the market falls uh, a bit lower than it is right now. Mm -hmm. And I highlight, uh, it's, it's a bit important to look, uh, you know, there's been the bear run that was there, and then there was a red curb that you uh, pushed uh, financial stocks further down, the mm -hmm. banks further down. Mm -hmm. uh, and all that is going to sort of change because all this is cyclical. We have a moment when everything is down, like now, and then we have a moment when everything comes back up. Started. And I think uh, that moment is way post due. Uh, so I would definitely encourage people to buy in right now. Mm -hmm. Even if they are sort of uh, concerned about uh, the possible volatility in some stocks, there are those stocks that are like by nature defensive whatever happens, they will do well. Mm -hmm. East African breweries, for example, yeah. whatever happens, whether the economy is bad, people consume the product, which means the stock uh, performs well. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing applies to BAT. Uh, and when you think of it, uh, the same thing seems to uh, apply to Kenjin. Uh, because uh, we are in a period where we need to keep generating energy non-stop and uh, the risk between uh, the risk in energy is more in Kenya power than in Kenjin so Kenjin can generate as much and just sell it off to Kenya power mm -hmm. so there are those stocks that uh, even if you're not too sure what's going to happen you can go into 
because they are perfectly stable mm -hmm. and resilient. These are the, the, the kind of markets where you, I mean, the, the kind of uh, uh, shares where you can bet your grandmother's court. Yes, absolutely. Very well. And tell me, Thizi, I mean, when I look at these figures, you know, I'm somehow gob gobsmacked uh -huh. by these factors. Kenjin, I mean, moving 93.7 million shares. Mm -hmm. uh, Safaricom, 12 million shares. I mean, what is happening with Kenjin? Uh, Kenjin, uh, as I just mentioned, it's a, a defensive stock. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are an institutional investor looking to pick a position mm -hmm. and you are not sure where the banks are going to go or where uh, Centum is going to go or these other uh, companies are going to go, mm -hmm. uh, you can be sure that uh, in the period that we are in, Kenjan is, is going to continue making revenue. And uh, as you've seen, uh, the price is too low, it's too discounted to encourage investment uh, for people with uh, a long-term perspective, just maybe two, two to three years perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does make sense to me that you're, going, you're seeing Kenjan uh, performing uh, extremely well in terms of volume trading. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about um, uh, 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 Britam? We have also seen Britam making some serious moves in there. Right. Uh, so we had uh, this material information to uh, the extent that uh, IFC is going to be coming on board, uh, taking a 10.3% stake of Britam uh, for about 3.5 billion. And the critical information was that they are paying a premium to the market price at mm -hmm. about 15, 15, 15 shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means uh, retail people were inclined to buy the stock mm -hmm. because uh, they expected the price to go uh, to go up now the only uh, issue with that is that it was privately placed so it didn't sort of cross through the market okay. but uh, the beauty of it is that uh, ifc has a track record yeah. uh, and everyone can expect that their entry into britam is only going to make things much better so that, that is somehow swaying the performance of, yes. The, of yes. the share yes edwin thank you very much indeed for your time and for your information Welcome. Edwin Chui, Senior Analyst at Dyer and Blair, joining us here uh, to help us understand where the market is going. One, the Market 101 is coming up next. Stay right here. My question is, when an investor wants to invest, what should he or she look into investing when coming to the Nairobi Securities Exchange? As an investor looking to buy shares, you should consider the following factors. Uh, number one, is the stock uh, trading at a discount to its value? And if it is, it means uh, the price is going to rise at some point. Number two, uh, does the company pay dividends? If it pays dividends, then it means you're going to have more cash flow uh, from the investment other than uh, the value of the share itself. Uh, the other thing you can consider is uh, how long uh, you intend to, uh, to make the investment. Uh, if you're short term, uh, then you want to look at uh, stocks that tend to move up and down uh, over a short period of time. And if you're long term, then you want to look at stocks that have made investments over a long period of time. Uh, and lastly, uh, it may help to look at uh, management, the, the nature of management, the performance uh, in the last couple of years, uh, the issues uh, involved uh, in the company, just to be sure that your investment is going to be uh, safe. Our history there on historical fact. Remember that time when the market was actually a market. Well, at this point, we come to the end of trading bell for this week. And of course, 
This has been the first edition of Trading Bell for the year 2017. We look forward for much of your engagement. And of course, remember, you can always get to us. Our Twitter handle is at the Trading Bell. Our SMS line is 22162. And remember to start the, uh, with the word B's, that is B-I-Z. Well, Facebook page is the Trading Bell TV show. My personal Twitter handle is at O'Brien Kimani. Thank you very much. We look forward to see you again next, next week right here on KBC Channel 1. Back to your broadcasting house.